Good morning, Anchor. We're so glad that you're able to join us today. Um, if you'll bow your heads with me, we'll get started with the word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, thank you for this time that you've given us, Lord, to gather and to just pray together, God, to sing your praises together, Lord. We um, anticipate the day where we're able to come back together, God. We pray for healing. We pray for um, the hands that are conducting research, Lord, that we would be able to um, one day come together again, Lord, um, and to to be in community again, in physical community, God, to sing your praises out loud together, God, and to worship you. Um, but for now, God, we're so thankful for the technology you've given us, for the space that you've given us to be able to meet together in a sort of virtual way, God, um, and still know that we can continue to pursue you because you are a God who is everywhere, God, not just in a physical church, Lord. So would you just be in this time, Lord, we invite you into this space. Um, please continue to work in our lives and to continue to, um, to just move and show us that you're capable of doing great things and that you're faithful through everything, Lord. And in your name, amen.
sunrise is constant every day. choose to believe you're working in the waiting though the future isn't clear to me I trust you anyway in the silence I choose to Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Anger Community Church. We're so happy that you're able to join us this Sunday morning. My name is Emmeline, and I will be going over our announcements for today. As usual, we want to review our purpose statement here at Anchor Community Church, which is to make gospel-centered disciples in community on mission to the glory of God. 
We are still looking for more volunteers, especially in our hospitality, productions, and operations teams, especially for a future possible service outdoors. So please sign up on our website under the serve tab if you are interested. As always, if you have any prayer requests or would like to join one of our online community groups, please fill out this prayer request link online. Groups are always open for new people, so please let us know if you are interested and we will direct you to the right people. If you would like to give, please go to our giving page on our website as well. If you are a regular attender, please give as you are able to, but if you are new, please do not feel any pressure to give. And now I will pray for our service. God, we just thank you for this time and the opportunity to gather together. Um, we know that this has been a very difficult time for many people, um, and we may feel isolated, but we know that, God, you are still sovereign, that you are faithful, um, and that as the church, Lord, we can continue to love one another well. We just pray for this time, God, that you help us open our hearts to hear your word and be reminded of the truths that we need to hear and be encouraged as well. Um, we thank you for all the people that are tuning in today and for all those all those that you have brought here with us today. Um, we pray all this in your name. Amen. Good morning. Pastor Ben here. Welcome to our stream. Um, I actually have one more announcement before we get started with the sermon. And um, this is regarding uh, our reopening. So earlier this week, um, we found out that the state of California and L.A. County lifted the restriction for outdoor singing that they had put in place uh, last week. And um, so in light of that, we have decided to go ahead and to hold our first outdoor service on uh, Sunday, July 26, two weeks from today, um, at 5.30 p.m. in the parking lot of FEC Diamond Bar. Um, and that's barring any new restrictions from the government that come in the next couple of weeks. And um, our goal is to do this every other week, um, at least to start out with. Um, you know, this week after much uh, prayerful discussion with our doctors and our steering team, um, we all agreed that, you know, we feel confident that we can um, have a safe, uh, a meaningful and a sustainable service um, outdoors. And, you know, there's going to be many more details that we're going to uh, release on our website in the next couple of weeks about this service. But for now, let me just uh, highlight four things about this service. <clears throat> First, um, it will be live streamed for those who cannot attend. Okay, so, you know, if you can't attend for, you know, whatever reason, you know, we welcome you to join the live stream. Secondly, face coverings will be required at all times. Okay, this is very important. If we're gonna gather, we need to do it safely. Thirdly, physical dis distancing of at least six feet will be required at all times, going together with that last announcement. And fourth, online registration and screening will also be required, and we will be um, opening the service for the first 50 who register. The registration will open next Sunday July 19th at 2 p.m. on our website. And so for all of these details and more details, please check our COVID update uh, page on the website. If you would like to get email, we're also gonna email all this information out. If you're not on the email notification list, please sign up also on that page. Um, and please pray for us as we, you know, we really desire to shepherd you in a wise way and in a safe way. So, so please pray for us. Thank you. We're in a sermon series uh, called Following Jesus um, in a Post-Christian World. And we're looking at what it looks like to follow Jesus in this world that we live in now, which is it's kind of confusing, it's fractured, um, it's polarized, right? So how do we faithfully follow Jesus um, in this world? And in our passage that we're going to look at this morning, the image that we see is the image of going through a fire. Um, 
you know, back when I was a teenager, middle school and high school, I remember one of my favorite Christian worship songs was this song called Refiner's Fire. And uh, I'll give you 10 bucks if you can sing that song because it's pretty old and I'm dating myself here. Um, but uh, that song was based on this passage that we're going to read today. And, you know, yeah, back when I was in uh, middle school, I I'm pretty sure I didn't really understand the meaning of that song. Because I think if I did, um, I don't know if I would want to sing it very much. Right? Because, you know, it sounds nice, you know, refiner's fire, but, you know, to actually think about being refined by being in the fire, that's actually pretty scary. And I don't think anyone really want. no one wants that. So, you know, what, is it, what does that mean? What, what does it mean when the Bible says um, sometimes we have to go through the fire? And uh, how do we get through that? So, so let's read uh, 1 Peter chapter 1. <clears throat> and we're going to read from verse 6 to 9. Okay, 1 Peter 1, 6 to 9. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. All right, let's, uh, let's pray. Dear God, Lord, we, we come to you again um, today and we ask, God, that you would speak to us through your holy word God we come and we ask that you would you would truly convict our hearts through the spirit and we pray this in Jesus name amen all right so um, today we're looking at what it means to go through the fire and the first thing that we see about the fire here is that the fire can refine your faith. The fire can refine your faith. So verse 6, it says this, In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials. And so if you remember from uh, last week, the first five verses of 1 Peter is, is talking about our election, how God has chosen us to be born again to a living hope that, that we've been sprinkled with the blood of Jesus and we've been empowered by the Holy Spirit. And then so Peter here, he says to his readers, in this, in all of that, you can rejoice even though for a little while you have been grieved by various trials. And so we're going we're gonna to be looking at this more as we go through the book. But we're going to see as we look at this book um, just exactly what kind of trials um, these Christians that Peter was writing to were going through. And let me just say, say this for now. <clears throat> the, the trials that they're going through were not really that much different than the trials we go through today. Um, you know, these Christians... Um, if you read the book, it, there's nowhere in the book where it says that they were being killed for their faith or that they were being physically harmed in any way. I and mean, there's no evidence in this book that there was a statewide sponsored uh, persecution of Christians. No, uh, the trials that you see there is really more that the Christians were being um, marginalized and ostracized by society. 
And so they were made fun of. They were, they were thought to be kind of weird. Um, they were slandered for their faith. And, you know, honestly, today, you know, if you, if you truly follow Jesus, I think those things will happen to you today, too, in some way. So, so how does uh, Peter encourage his readers who are going through these trials? Right? Well, well first of all, it says in verse 6 that they're necessary. Okay? And why is it necessary? Look at verse 7. <clears throat> so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. See, these trials, they're necessary because they are necessary to test um, their faith, to show that their faith was genuine, that their faith was real. All right? And so, okay, okay, Peter, okay, I think I understand what you're saying, but could you give me an image, a metaphor, right? And so Peter does that. He gives us an image to understand this. And he gives us the image of gold that is tested by fire. Okay, so I, I did a little research about, you know, exactly how gold is uh, refined and purified. And, and so what would happen, you know, even, uh, even 2,000 years ago when this book was written, um, you know, gold, when you first find it, it's, it's gold ore, okay? So it's like clumped up um, with all these other uh, substances and materials in it. And what you do is you break up that ore and then you, you put it in a, uh, a fiery hot furnace or, you know, just in the fire directly and you heat it past uh, its melting point and what happens when you heat it um, all the impurities right and all the other substances they either just burn off or they'll rise to the top and you can skim it off and then the result is that the gold is pure it's been refined and but that's the image that Peter gives to us when we walk through difficulties and trials from, that come from trying to follow Jesus. You know, note that it says here that your faith is more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire. Right? So he's saying that even gold, when it's been purified, right, and it's the most precious metal that we have on earth, right, your faith after it's been tested and refined and purified, it's even more precious than, than gold. You know, what's interesting about this image is that, um, you know, fire it can purify things like gold but fire can also destroy other substances right if if the metal is not as strong as gold or has a different makeup right it will be destroyed by that very same fire it will be melted it will be burned and I think that's the same thing with our faith. Right? Trials, they can refine your faith. They can make you grow deeper in your faith. But they also can destroy your faith. And they, they can draw you away from God. You know, and I know I've seen both of those in people that I've known, right? I've known a lot of people who, who have professed to have faith in Jesus, 
but once their faith really got tested, like once they faced uh, some really difficult trials, uh, maybe some intellectual doubts, uh, maybe some difficult times in their life, they fell away, they, they were drawn away from God, their faith uh, did not last through that trial. But I've also known a lot of people who have gone through extremely difficult things. And because they went through that, I, I can just tell their faith is so much deeper. Their character is, is more also deeper. Like they're so much wiser because they went through those things. They love God even more after going through those things. So, so what's the difference? How can, how can we go through the fire and have it not destroy us, but to strengthen us? Well, second thing we see here is that the fire, the fire exposes your hope. The fire exposes your hope. Uh, look at verse 8. It says, there, Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory. All right, so here, here Peter reminds his readers of their faith. He says, you know, even though you have never seen Jesus with your eyes and you, and you still have never seen him, you love him. Right? And this is coming from Peter. And Peter is one of Jesus' disciples and one of his best friends. Now, Peter actually saw Jesus, but he says, but you, you don't, you've never seen Jesus, but you still love him. You see, what, what fire does, what the fire, the trials do, just like it, like it does with gold, is it, it, brings out the impurities in our lives the the flaws the insecurities in our lives and you know all of us we're, we're like that impure gold we're, we're all a mix of genuine faith and impurities okay like the, i don't no, no matter how long you've been a christian you're still a work in progress we all have things in our lives, rough edges, things that really still need to be purified and refined. And, and when you go through the fire, those things are exposed. All right? and, and the question is, when you go through that fire, is this. What, do, what are you going to put your hope in? Right? Are you going to put your hope in the things that are seen? Okay, the, the hopes and dreams that everyone, you look around the world, that's, the, the, that's what you see. These are the things that people run after and chase after. Are you going to put your hope in those things? Are you going to put your hope in things uh, that will give you temporary comfort and gratification? Or will you put your hope in the things that are unseen in a God who is unseen but whose reality is deeper and more real than anything that you can see uh, this past week um, I watched the movie version of Hamilton on Disney Plus and uh, thank you Disney for, for doing that because, um, you know, I, I was very curious about Hamilton, but I, I'm not going to pay a couple hundred bucks to go see Hamilton, all right? Maybe, maybe some of you would, right? But, or have, you know, but, um, you know, I, it was great. I wasn't disappointed. Um, but one thing that stuck out to me as I watched this musical, this movie, um, was what led to the downfall 
of uh, Alexander Hamilton. Okay, and I won't give you details. I won't. I won't ruin it for you if you haven't seen it, right? But um, you know, Hamilton, right? Alexander Hamilton. He was this very ambitious young politician, right? He wanted to uh, use his words, his skills, to to really change the world, to join this revolution. And uh, in the beginning of the musical, towards the beginning, there is this song called "Never Satisfied." Right? And, it des- and it really describes Hamilton's ambition, right? his drive. He was never satisfied. He always wanted to do more, to work harder. And you know, that, that led him to achieve many great things. But it also led him to destroy his family. And, uh, you know, later in the musical, there is... A beautiful song by um, Eliza, who is Hamilton's, you know, beloved wife. Um, And she was so loving, so supportive. But, you know, after some things happen, she says in this song, You and your words, obsessed with your legacy, your sentences border on senseless. And you are paranoid at every paragraph how they perceive you, you. You, you. And I thought it was such a beautiful picture, accurate picture, of how when, when we put our hope in our careers or in our, dr- in our dreams, even in, in a noble cause, when you put all your hope into those things, we turn those things into obsessions, into idols. That, that's just what human beings do, right? We turn good things into ultimate things, right? And when we put all of our glory and our self-worth and our pride and our value into these, these things, these idols, these pursuits, and the result is that we, we begin to sell our souls, for these things and we begin to hurt the people that we love the most because we we need those things so much and we begin to destroy ourselves friends if you attach your hope okay if you attach your hope to to any uh, circumstance in your life things uh, in your life um, that, that are circumstantial, your life will just be like an emotional roller coaster, okay? So yeah, just picture a string, like you, you attach your joy and your hope to relationships, to significant others. So, so when that's going good, you're happy. When that's going bad, you're depressed. You attach your, your hope to your career and your success. When that's going good, you're happy. When it's going bad, you're not, right? Your life will just be up and down, up and down constantly, depending on your circumstance. What we all need is a hope and a joy that's not dependent on our circumstances. So see what happens when you go through trials and difficulties, they they expose what you've been putting your hope in, okay? Because the trials, they probably take away one of those things that you've been chasing after and you realize that's what you've been basing your hope in, right? So so it doesn't matter what you say your hope is in. What matters is, you know, what's your functional, what really is your hope in it? And your trials expose that. Right, so I, so you could say all day long. You can say you can sing worship songs, right? You could listen to worship songs all the time. You can say that your hope is in God, but when you break up with your boyfriend or girlfriend, and you feel like your life is not worth living anymore, it shows you what you've really been putting your hope in. You've been putting your hope in that relationship.
the, the fire, it, it exposes the things that you are putting your hope in. Right? But lastly, what we see here is that the fire can lead to joy. The fire can lead to joy. Look at verse 8. It says, Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. When faith is refined by the fire, it can lead to a joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory. Isn't that beautiful? The way Peter says that? A joy that's inexpressible and filled with glory. I love how he says that this joy, it's inexpressible. You can't express it. You can't see it by your expression, right? It's more than just a happy smile on your face, right? It's more than any kind of words can even fully capture. It's, it's more than anything that you can see on the outside, right? It's a joy that's much deeper and greater and stronger than any you know, amount of clothes or cars or houses that money, that, that money can buy. It's, it's more, uh, more beautiful and lasting than those things. You notice the other thing about joy in this passage. Let's go back to verse 6. Okay, verse 6 said, In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials. All right, see, so it says that in this you rejoice, even though right now you are grieving. All right? You rejoice, yet you also grieve at the same time. Joy can coexist with grief. So this joy, it's, it's not, uh, this joy is, is not, uh, it's a joy that's honest. It's a joy that doesn't suppress your pain, right, or, or your emotions, but a, a joy that you can have even in your pain. A joy that you can have even while you lament and cry out to God in your struggle. Now, Tim Keller put it like this. He said, you know, the joy that you want, it's resilience without stoicism. Resilience without stoicism. So it's a resilience, it's a strength that you can have, right? But it's a resilience that's not stoic, meaning that you know you, you just pretend to have it all together, you, you suppress your emotions, you put on a brave face. No, it's a resilience that's also honest. You know, as I was studying this passage, um, you know, this, this is how God, you know, spoke to me and was challenging me. And I, maybe you can relate to this. I don't know. Right. But, um, you know, yeah, when, when people ask me how I'm doing, you know, during this COVID period, I, I try to be honest. I, you know, because, yeah, I want to be honest. I don't want to be stoic. Okay. So, yeah, I tell people, man, it's been rough. It's been rough. It, there's been ups and downs. And man, it does seem like for me, you know, I just always feel tired and exhausted because, you know, just just like there's always something to be stressed out about, you know, and there's always new challenges every week. And uh, man, you know, I, I'm tired of Zoom. <laughs> Right? I'm tired of Zoom. I'm, I'm tired of my stinking house. <laughs> right? I miss going to places. I miss seeing all of you. 
I do. I miss all of you. I miss your faces. I miss being with you in person. But, you know, as I was, you know, reading this passage and studying it, you know, I think God was challenging me and he was uh, he was saying to me, he was saying, Ben, as you look back at these past few months, can you see how I've been trying to refine you? And, you know, if, I, if I'm honest, I haven't spent a lot of time thinking about that. I've been uh, just trying to get through, get through it. But I think God challenged me and uh, through this passage and just challenged me to think about, you know, Ben, how has God been refining you and growing you and trying to mold you through this time? You know, pray about that. Think about that. You know, that, that's just a different mindset. And, um, you know, you know, once again, you know, there's not an easy answer to that, that question, right? And I don't think we should pretend, you know, that we're learning some great lesson when you don't, you don't, you really honestly don't know what lesson you're learning, right? But, you know, I think the question is, can we use this time to look at ourselves and look at the, the ways that God is trying to expose some stuff in our lives? And, and will, we, will we, God is inviting us, will we walk patiently with him as he leads us through the fire? As he refines us through the fire. You know, I know a lot of you are really struggling spiritually right now. Um, or just maybe just struggling in general, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. You know, I think a lot of us probably just are like, man, I'm done. I'm done with COVID. I'm done with it. I'm I'm done with all the zooms. You know, forget it. Right? I'm tired of watching uh, church on a video. You know, it's just like it's just it's not the same, right? It's too emotionally draining. And I think a lot of us, you know, we're we're tempted to just give up. And, and let me just say this, you know, first of all, let me just say this, our leaders have been talking pretty much every week about how we can try to meet together in person again, because we know that that's so important. And we know that these, the virtual things we're doing is not nearly anything like it is in person. And we know how difficult that is. And so we're, we want to do that as soon as it's safe and wise to do that. But could I just encourage you, if that's how you're feeling today, don't give up. Don't let this fire draw you away from God. Don't let this fire draw you away from Christian brothers and sisters, from community. Fight, fight for your faith. Ask God to give you the strength that you don't have. We don't have that strength in us. But God can give you the strength. Ask Him to give you the strength to pursue Him. Even in this time. You know, I think in this time, we're, we're getting a little tiny taste of what it's like to be a Christian in some parts of the world where, you know, you're persecuted, you're really persecuted for your faith. Like think about the Christians in China or in Afghanistan or Iran, right? They, they can't meet in person, not because of a virus, but because if they meet in person, they, they go to jail. But those Christians, they do whatever it takes. They risk their lives 
to study the Bible and to fellowship with each other. Friends, friends, I, I know it's not easy. All right, this is, you know, we don't want to downplay how hard it is. Okay, This is a fire uh, this pandemic is a fire like we've never seen before in our lives. But let me just leave you with um, this passage from Isaiah 43. Isaiah, Prophet Isaiah says this. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Fear not, for I am with you. Let's pray. Oh God, Lord, we come before you and we uh, yeah, we want to be honest. We want to, because we, we just come before, we know you, that you know how we feel, God, and we just want to tell you that we're frustrated, we're, we're weak. For all sorts of different reasons, we're discouraged. And God, yeah, you, you, you sympathize with us. You know that we're weak. So God, we just ask you, would you give us strength? the strength that we don't have. Would you help us to fight for our faith? And God, Lord, would you help us to be open to the ways that you are refining us, the ways that you might be exposing these lies that we have chosen to believe in, these false, weak hopes, and would you help us to see those things for what they are? Would you help us to turn our eyes toward you, to draw near to you? God, help us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Father God, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your faithfulness in our lives, Lord. Thank you for being the strong rock which we can stand on and count on, Lord. 
We thank you for just all the struggles and trials, Lord, that even in the moment, they are not preferable at all, God, and we would rather be doing anything but going through the fire, Lord. Um, but we just thank you, Lord, that there are these moments of refinement, God, that you are um, allowing us to pursue our sanctification, God, of looking more like you each and every day, God. And so I pray that we would just continue to press on, God, even when things get difficult. We pray that we'd continue to find joy in you and believing in who you are, God, and what you say you will accomplish and the things you will do, Lord. So we thank you for this time and in your name. Amen.